In early May, Governor Dayton signed into law a bill that would ban state vendor contracts and investments in companies that boycott Israel. He also signed a bill that would limit life insurance payments to beneficiaries of terrorists. The bill's author, Senator Warren Limmer, now joins me in the studio. Welcome. Glad to be here. Before we get to the two bills, which are now laws, I'd like to ask you about Senator Latz's uh, proposal that would restrict internet service providers' mm. ability to share or sell their customer data. He is also appearing on this program, and I just wanted to know where you stand. Is there urgency to act on this measure? Well, I share Senator Latz's concern about whether or not the information that we, sh we provide on an internet communication uh, is shared with other people for probably the motive of profit by corporations or government interest. Uh, whenever I use an internet, I always assume and have from the very beginning that we should have the same amount of privacy as if we were talking on a telephone in our own home to a loved one across town. And I don't think that really is the case. We've seen more and more uh, cases and evidence that what we type into an internet is accumulated, it's sold somewhere, and then we get a ton of advertising coming back to us regarding whatever subject we were talking about or inquiry we made. I think the Minnesota people believe that their information should be private and it should always be private unless they write a consent to say, yes, you can share that information. Let's turn to the law that, that deals with Israel boycott prohibitions. Mm -hmm. Minnesota has joined at least 17 other states now in enacting this kind of law. How did you become aware of this movement? Actually, the Jewish community in the Twin Cities brought this to my attention. They are uh, reacting to an international movement that's beginning to take root in the United States called the anti, or called the BDS movement against the state of Israel. This movement, or the BDS, means boycott, divest, and sanction the state of Israel wherever possible. And what they try to do, what the, what the real goal of that movement is, is by those who do not want the state of Israel to exist, they want to go after their financial means to make uh, money internationally by shared contracts and vendor relationships. Minnesota has an $89 million trading agreement with the state of Israel. It's very profitable for both countries, and yet at the same time, we, in the form of this bill, uh, are designing an anti-discrimination effort that if you, if you are a vendor in the state of Minnesota contracting with our state government, if you are planning on or if you act on, on discriminating against uh, the state of Israel or those who trade with the state of Israel or the Jewish people, that that vending contract can be considered null and void and we will not, as a state government, have a, a business relationship with that particular vendor. Now some believe or argue that boycotts are a peaceful means of protest and a tool for changing behavior. So mm -hmm. proponents of BDS are comparing their efforts to the anti-apartheid movement in South Africa. Uh, they're pushing for a two-state solution by enacting this law, is the state supporting Israel over Palestine? Well, first, this, this bill does not get into any uh, sanction of a two-state solution. It doesn't go that far. It doesn't go in the form of a one-state solution. It only defines the business relationship we have with a particular vendor. And only if that vendor has been found uh, discriminatory by the legislature against the state of Israel or a vending relationship uh, with the state and uh, a business in the state of Israel. It has nothing to do with anything else. And we do not, we have actually encouraged freedom of speech uh, in that bill. We've emphasized that this is not uh, contrary in any way. You could have a vendor who has an opinion, who wants to lawfully express that opinion uh, if they choose to be against the state of Israel, that, does, that in itself is not a discriminatory act. It's when you practice a boycott or a sanction or a, um, a divestment of money uh, from 
the state of Israel, uh, then it would start to get closer to that relationship of illegal activity. Let's turn now to the bill that would prevent life insurance companies from having mm -hmm. to pay out beyond what the individual paid in when that person dies committing a terrorist act. This, um, I believe, comes from the San Bernardino uh, That's uh, right. Terrorist That's Act. Right. Um, how did you get the idea to put this in statute? Well, actually, the insurance industry came to us and, and reflected on the San Bernardino shooting where two individuals decided to shoot up a government building. They killed, I think, 14 people. But prior to that, uh, close to two years ago, earlier and it was proven that they have been plan they were planning this attack for quite some time even beyond two years back but they loaded up their life insurance and then their families received a tremendous benefit in the event of their death that had occurred as a result of a terror driven attack mm -hmm. by them that they initiated we began to think about that a little closer if you had a terror cell in the United States and one of those members decided to load up his life insurance, he could actually, in the event of his death Continue as a result, future terrorist acts. he could fund another cell, terrorist cell member, or he could send that money to Hamas, or he could send it to anyone. And we, we decided as a legislature that this is taking, that, that it's taking advantage of the life insurance industry and it's a means to finance even more terror in the United States. We decided, and we might be the first state in the country to do this, we decided that's not gonna happen in the state of Minnesota. There were two no votes in the House, one of which was Representative John Lesh. He said the bill was not specific enough and could allow insurance companies who have financial interest in mm -hmm. not paying claims to decide what constitutes an act of terrorism rather than a court of law. What do you think of that objection? Well, we, we uh, relied on the definition of terror that's already in existing law, uh, and we used that as our definition. If he has a problem with how it's applied in this bill, he'll have a problem in how it's applied anywhere else in the state of Minnesota. Uh, terror is defined uh, loosely as uh, a threat that would imply immediate danger or even the act of danger against an innocent individual uh, in order to further, uh, not a criminal purpose, but an advocacy for another idea. And uh, this, this is important to get right. Uh, terrorism is a threat. I'm sad to say that the bill that we're talking about and the previous one is actually a sign of our times. And I think as a society and as a culture, we have to meet that challenge, otherwise it will continue and it'll escalate. We're doing what we can in the state of Minnesota to put the brakes on it. Senator Limmer, it is always a pleasure to have you here. Thanks very much. Yeah, love to be here, thank you.